welcome to Studio Review Digital. My name is Jeff. It's actually an outcast of Juba Southwest. And we are here to meet a former journalist, now a poultry farmer. Thank you very much, Moses Yassin, for welcoming us to your farm. Yeah, place is mine. Nice. Accepted please. to be on the interview. Yeah, you're welcome. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming. All right. I, yeah. I very much want us to talk about the your new job that is farming, mm -hmm. but I want us to to go back to where you started it. Your media. Talk to us about your media ba mm -hmm. background. How it all started. Yeah, uh, I was. Um, I was just like any other passionate young journalist, mm -hmm. uh, had to venture into broadcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I started with CTFM, mm -hmm. I worked there for like six years, mm -hmm. uh, then I quit when I joined Capital. Seven years mm -hmm. in the media, and so finally I felt like you know there is need for me to change. Mm -hmm. You know, take a new challenge, and uh, for this matter, I had to choose funny. I know it's 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 a little bit it's beating in people's minds as to why I so you know uh, switch from the media mm -hmm. to farming. But yeah, I just want to take the new challenge. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll talk about the, the new challenge later on. But I want to find out you have seven years seven solid years of media work mm -hmm. and you decided to to quit i just wanted to i just wanted to talk about how the experience working in the media sector has been for you has it changed your life in any way yes yes mm -hmm. uh the experience has been really really great mm -hmm. uh, i think i'm lucky mm -hmm. to be uh you know representing some of the leading media houses in the country mm -hmm. and uh I, I won't trade that for anything mm -hmm. uh, it's been really a great journey uh, like i said it's so exciting mm -hmm. you know meeting new people of course making a big contribution mm -hmm. within my capacity uh, to the country mm -hmm. uh, first it, it, it's it has been really a great one it's mm -hmm. been a great one mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I when you decided to to venture it into a new into a new uh, job like you know, you're doing poultry farming i understand mm -hmm. how difficult was it for you having spent seven years in the media industry how how was it like making that decision to quit from here to get a new job well uh it was it was very, it was very easy it was a very easy decision because i didn't make the decision i didn't just switch uh, it wasn't a one day decision mm -hmm. i actually uh ventured into farming mm -hmm. let's say this is now like my third year but i didn't wow. just go deep into it i started small i started small with uh, the family a, mm -hmm. and that was when i started preparing my transition mm -hmm. uh, when i moved to capital it was also a step towards my transition to to farming mm -hmm. because i had you know i was doing on the morning show three hours so three many hours i had it all to myself mm -hmm. i was you know running up and down trying to fix three things here mm -hmm. so it took me it, it wasn't a one day uh transition mm -hmm. uh beside some friends and family members thought i'm crazy because i remember some people were like you, you're really leaving the media and you're going to farming are you are you okay mm -hmm. are you really okay mm -hmm. and uh my, my dad didn't take that well Mm -hmm. My dad, uh, when I told him that I'm, I'm switching to farming full time, mm -hmm. because I was supporting, you know, we had a family farm, so I was, I was supporting him mm -hmm. to expand on it. Mm -hmm. But when I told him that I'm switching to farming full time, he's like, with all the degrees you got, you're going to keep them in the house? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, it didn't go well with some people. people. Yeah. I remember some followers are like, no, you're saying you can't do this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so far. And how were you able to convince your father to allow you to... to, to to do your I mean farming well I, I, at my age i really i i i, I didn't i didn't have to you know i did nothing much mm -hmm. to convince him it was my decision mm -hmm. it's my choice i told him i'm moving to farming mm -hmm. and uh, when i told him i'm moving to farming to him mm -hmm. he was like you're really like you, 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 you're a disappointment okay. <laughs> but somehow mm -hmm. i had to convince him because still i had to you know i still take care of the bills in the house mm -hmm. i still support him and uh, my mom mm -hmm. you know i was supporting i'm still supporting my siblings i told him nothing is going to change mm -hmm. i'll still support you i'll still support my siblings in school mm -hmm. i'll still support my kids but yeah mm -hmm. i just need to take this challenge i know it's going to be it's going to be exciting mm -hmm. i want to try this out mm -hmm. and of course at my level mm -hmm. you know being a matured guy he, he he knew that over the years he understands me well, they understand me very well so it's like, okay if this is something you really want to do mm. i just want you to go for it mm. but 
uh, the, 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 I hope you're not making a mistake. I told him, no, I'm not making a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, he, he accepted at the end of the day. He knew that, yeah, mm -hmm. this is good. I had to, it took me time, like over a week, to explain myself to him. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Let, let's talk about the education, the education background. Mm -hmm. You're now a poultry farmer, but you did media, some, I mean, media courses to be a journalist. Take us through the, that thing. Do you, do you, have you also started poultry farming? N never. I've never been to, uh, to, 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 to a class, uh, to an agriculture class. Mm -hmm. I remember doing agriculture when I was in, when I was in all level, mm -hmm. doing snare one to snare three, mm -hmm. snare three, snare four. I was specializing, mm -hmm. and when I went to uh, A level for my snare five and snare six, I remember I did a divinity, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and a history, mm -hmm. uh, plus some literature mm -hmm. uh, and ICT. But then mm -hmm. the entrepreneurship in me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. was the basics. You know, it was the basic uh, mm -hmm. foundation. Mm -hmm. That's how the farming part of it started. So I, I knew that I was going to be a farmer. Mm -hmm. I had a passion. Mm -hmm. But yes, at school I didn't study agriculture. Mm -hmm. I only studied entrepreneurship. But at primary level, I mean at secondary level, you know, it wasn't a serious thing. Mm -hmm. We're just doing it for the scores, to score the marks. Yeah. But yeah, I felt like, you know, mm -hmm. I felt like the entrepreneurship part of it mm -hmm. played a huge part in me. Uh, not agriculture. I only did, you know, I was doing some online reading, mm -hmm. watching uh, YouTube videos, mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. And then, and when you when when you decided when you finally decided to do this, I I I, I, I want us to talk about deciding it now to farming, quitting quitting journalism. Mm. Was there something that triggered you? you? You have hinted earlier on. You said that you had it's been a dream with you. Your family had a farm too. Mm -hmm. So, but what really prompted you to do specifically poultry? Why did you do a different? Uh, different just to clarify, farming? just to clarify on farming. I'm not only. Pineapple. Maize plantation, coffee, and uh, uh, pineapple, and uh, yeah. Wow, so that's amazing. That we, yeah. Where are these plantations of your the coffee, the, the maize, they are, they are, the cassava? They are based in Yei, mm -hmm. uh, 14 miles from uh, Lasso Road, uh, DRC. When you're heading from Yei, you're heading to DRC. This is 14 miles, a place called Rebecca. That's my home village, mm -hmm. and that's where the, the farm is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, let's, let's talk about your poultry farm here. Mm -hmm. How how easy was it for you to start? Is it not capital intensive? Ah, uh, it is. It's mm -hmm. capital intensive. It's labor intensive. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. But uh, I started. I started small. Mm -hmm. I didn't start like you know, just like woke up in the morning and be like, you know, I'm going to have mm -hmm. one thousand or five thousand birds. Mm -hmm. I started small mm -hmm. uh, with about three hundred birds, mm -hmm. and it was it was more like an experiment. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to learn and see how it goes, mm -hmm. and that. When I, when I started with that, I realized that I can actually do this. And that is how it, 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 it all went down, mm -hmm. you know. So I knew that it was going to go well, mm -hmm. because when I started with 300, I saw, you know, it was a bit encouraging. Mm -hmm. And there was a need for me to, to increase and make it bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that is great. Uh, you always said it's labor thing. Broilers. Mm -hmm. I'm optimistic that by uh, mid this year mm -hmm. we should be able to diversify our means of mm -hmm. uh, production. We should be able to venture into layers and be able to have broilers because once you have the layers, you don't 
only supplying Chiba with fresh eggs. Mm -hmm. And currently, we're only supplying Chiba with fresh, affordable, and healthy chicken. Mm -hmm. And these are healthy, you know, they can go slaughter and really enjoy some made in Genova, you know, chicken. Yeah, 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 yeah I understand. Yeah. So, broiler is uh, an exotic uh, breed of the chicken. Why, why didn't you uh, get the local breed here and, and raise them in the state? Why, why choose broilers? Well, broilers, uh, we chose broilers uh, due to a uh, couple of factors. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, they are, they are easy to, 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 to raise them, mm -hmm. to, to, to run them. Mm -hmm. And like uh, uh, these uh, local, you know, uh, chicken, with local chicken, first of all, for you to get the breed is hard. For you to get a quality breed, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. And again, looking at the prices here, you cannot get small, small, uh, you know, local chicks and start raising them in, in a big number. Mm -hmm. You definitely obviously need, you know, these uh, uh, broilers in bigger number mm -hmm. to be able to raise them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we will go for a break from here. Hello, my name is Chris the Beast. You know me from Urban FM, but we also have a second station known as Baraka FM. In this festive season, I want to thank you so much for welcoming us so beautifully to Juba as we bring the radio revolution that we've all been waiting and yearning for. Yes, welcome back City Review Digital. My name is Jamie Satim and today we are at a poultry farm owned by a former journalist and now an enthusiastic poultry farmer, Moses Yassin. Yeah. So welcome back. Thank you. Yes, sir. What, the other thing I want to find out is how do you raise this chicken? Yeah. How do you raise them to be big enough to be sold? Yeah, uh, the, the process is... Um, it's intensive and it's wide. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we bring, uh, we buy chicks, they're all the chicks. Mm -hmm. uh, we buy them from Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, from our neighbors, use a lot to cross the border mm -hmm. and we import them from there. Mm -hmm. So we bring them when they're there, all the chicks mm -hmm. uh, from the hatchery mm -hmm. and then we come and raise them here in Juba. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's how the process starts. And then how, how, long, how, long, how long does it take to raise, I mean, uh, from, a one, from a young chick to a grown-up chicken to be sold? Yeah, from a, from a day old chick, yeah, the process takes about uh, two to three months. Mm -hmm. Two to three months, that depends on you as a farmer mm -hmm. following the recommended uh, procedures of mm -hmm. raising these birds from the feeding to the medication to the environment they're in. It takes about two months to three months. But... Uh, what we're doing right now is to make sure that these chicken are more like you know they're raised under local conditions. Mm -hmm. The feeding have to be there, but also we want to make sure that you know they are raised in a local you know environment and from a local perspective mm -hmm. as a country because our people prefer this locally raised the chicken. They feel like you know when you talk about two months, like, ah, these are you know mm -hmm. are they really healthy? Yes, they are. So we normally take two to three months. Two to three months. Yes. Yes. So, so the other thing I want us to talk about is. Uh, the, the importation of these young chicks, mm. to raising them. How, 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 how is your interaction with the government? Do you get asked? Do you pay a lot of taxes for them? How easy is it to import chicks? Well, it's it's very tricky. Uh, this case, the Ministry of Livestock have made a little bit. They, they have made the whole thing a little bit simple mm -hmm. because we normally go to them. You have to get a, a letter, mm -hmm. a letter of uh, no objection and a permit to bring these things into the country. Mm -hmm. Once you have the letter, it's mm -hmm. easy for you to cross the border. Mm -hmm. The challenge now comes from mm -hmm. uh, comes from uh, these other stakeholders. I mean, uh, these other stakeholders, like uh, the security personnel. Mm -hmm. These people don't, don't care whether you're, you're in the agriculture sector or not. Mm -hmm. Because our laws clearly, uh, you know, stipulates that agricultural produce mm -hmm. are not supposed to be taxed. Mm -hmm. But still we find ourselves paying these, you know, uh, this small, small taxes on the way and when you merge it together mm -hmm. it, it sums up to a bigger uh, you know a bigger amount mm -hmm. i mean to to, to really a good amount mm -hmm. and that is uh, a challenge to us mm -hmm. yeah now, now talk to us about talk us right through your day a day at, at, at a poultry farm what do you do what do you do from when you wake up 
to the morning, evening? What, what, what do you basically do? Uh, my day. What my, is your work like? My, my, my work like, of course, apart from you know the obvious activities like doing the house, mm. once I reach the farm, I have to make sure that you know all the procedures we have a day to day activities that have to be done mm -hmm. uh, from uh, the, the, the compound itself, mm -hmm. looking at security aspect of the farm, mm -hmm. and looking at uh, the health aspect of the farm in terms of the health of the chicken. Mm -hmm. We have to do a daily inspection. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it is a routine that we do every day, mm -hmm. and uh, we have the feeding aspect of it, which we feed them three times per day. Three we, times a day. Three times a day, wow. and they consume a lot. We have to make sure that you know they have the, the water uh, to the recommended mm -hmm. uh, amount. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 a, it's a long day. It's a long day at the farm. But it's so, fun though. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be fun. Yeah. That's why you like it. Yeah. Uh, that it's uh, you, like the way you described it. It's kind of it's a kind of work that you do with a lot of it involve a lot of physical work. Yes. Physically, you have to bend down, move yes. around, move yes. out. You, you you don't wear the normal suits that you, you yeah, wear. You, wear you, 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 yeah? you put on the gumbo. I'm not in the, the suit. Overall, the coat. That's what you wear. What was the reaction of, of your friends and those close to you when you decided to become a farmer? Like you, you mentioned, you hinted on how your father, as a member of your family, reacted yes. to what you wanted to do. You yes. said he, he was wondering if you were running crazy by just. I mean, leaving media to be down. Yeah. What was the reaction of your friends? Ah, uh, my friends, some of them were in shock. You know, they are, they are, they are a lot were in shock. And again, mm -hmm. it, it helped it helped me navigate around the type of friends I want to mm -hmm. keep around mm -hmm. because I realized that not not all of them have the, are in the same pool of thinking mm -hmm. as me. So you mean you got a lot of negative reactions? Yes, those with negative reactions mm -hmm. and those with positive ones. There are a couple of guys who really encouraged me. Mm -hmm. They had a positive reaction. Mm -hmm. And even when I started posting about my farm, mm -hmm. some, of, some of the friends were sharing and it, it was really great support to me. They were sharing and they were really talking about it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, advising or recommending other people to come and buy from me. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was a massive support. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you look at uh, the reaction of the public, there are some followers or fans who are like, oh, great work I send you an inspiration mm -hmm. and others are like oh you're a loser if you're stepping out from uh, from the media and you're coming Most things that agriculture, it's it's for the losers, which is not true. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of money that people are making mm -hmm. out of farming. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I tell you that one chicken is six thousand pounds, I can sell that and nobody complains about it. Mm -hmm. I can take ten or twenty, uh, mm -hmm. you know, chick a chicken and move around in Juba with my small truck. Mm -hmm. By by midday, I'm done. I've sold that, mm -hmm. and I come back. I have some money in my pocket, clean money. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we have a lot to do in terms of changing the narrative. And I'm really, I'm super uh, proud and really, really, have to, I'm really grateful to uh, the City Review because mm -hmm. you guys are shedding light on what some people really see like it's it's nothing. Okay. And this is a backbone. All right. Our, our time is running. I, I just want to. What advice would you like to tell young people who want a job that is a white collar job? They do not uh, see farming or farm, any sort of farming and other physical work as, as, as a good work to do to earn money. Yeah, first, first of all, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I would say uh, it, it's a collective, uh, you know, effort to mm -hmm. change the narrative. Mm -hmm. The media, just like City Review, I think they should take from you, mm -hmm. uh, set a new example mm -hmm. by shining light on farming, mm -hmm. especially on young people. Mm -hmm. The government has a lot to do in terms of, you know, we, we, we hear about the Youth Enterprise Fund, mm -hmm. which is part of the Ministry of Health in the Transitional National, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the agreement. Mm -hmm. If this fund is to be released and the government is to create a conducive environment in terms of infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, security, mm -hmm. young 
people will venture into farming. Mm -hmm. And also the stakeholders like these, uh, you know, uh, organizations, humanitarian agencies. Mm -hmm. I think they should be, uh, they should move out from, you know, giving humanitarian aid into development because I, most of this aid has no impact. You give somebody, it's better to train this person to go and fish. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they have a role to do there. But also coming back to the graduates and to the young people. Mm -hmm. As young people, this country is ours. We have a lot to do. And it comes back to you mm -hmm. into thinking what you want to do. Because yes, you can have that paper. I too have two degrees in the house doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm here on the field, you know. So I feel we all have a role to do in terms of, you know, uh, contributing to our uh, to food security, going to farming. Mm -hmm. Do what you can as long as at the end of the day it can give you something it can generate some revenue it's worth it all right all right that will do it for our interview with moses yasin a former journalist and now a poultry farmer who accepted to be on our interview thank you very much for watching